All right, so as you can see, we got quite a few weeds here. And on the, I don't know if it's the next, but one of the future projects is going to be taking one of these weeds and shoving it inside the shell of a GameCube. Not this one in particular, it's gonna be a black one. But, excuse me? So I thought I'd give you guys a little uh, behind the scenes content here. And we're just gonna be using one of these random weeds. I don't even know which revision some of these are. You know, it's prob it probably be, would be a good idea to um, look up which revision <laughs> I should probably be doing for this project. But my thinking is the GameCube shell is pretty freaking big compared to a Wii board at least, and you can trim you can trim every single one of these down pretty far, um, every revision of the Wii board. So it probably doesn't matter much, so I'm just gonna toss one of these on the, uh, on the old TV here and do a factory reset and then start installing some homebrew on it so I can install Portableize Me or whatever the heck it ends up um, being. So we're gonna go ahead and start that process. All right, I wanted to have a quick funeral for all of the me's uh, on this week, including Corby B, DD, Guest 2, HJ, Marv, and Mr. B. Rest in peace. Goodbye forever. Later. Mmm, you smell that? That's that new wee smell. All right, I gotta set a console nickname. We're gonna go with, uh, Lil Bringy. Lil oh no! All right, well, it still says Lil Bringy technically, so that'll do. Lil Bringy from uh, Barbados. <laughs> That's where we're going. Or, no, not, not Brazil. We're not going to Brazil. All right, so if you're not familiar with how Wii soft modding works, it's actually ridiculously simple. So you just gotta, oops, you just gotta get your console's MAC address, which is um, what it gets when it leaves the Apple factory. <laughs> Isn't that so freaking funny? Just kidding, that's like a unique identifier. It's kind of like a serial number um, for when it's on a network. So you gotta take that, and then you gotta just dump it in this website called Letterbomb, and then it just makes the magic happen. Okay, so I got the MAC address put in. I'm going to not be a robot, and then you can choose either one of these. And then you get this gorgeous zip file right here that has all the goodies in it. So you go ahead and open that up. You just take boot.elf, and then you take private, and I believe those are the only two you need. You just dump those on the root of your SD card and then put it in the Wii. So let's go ahead and do that. Who's a good little Wii? You are. Who gets an SD card? You do. Oh my god, I'm putting it in wrong. There we go, You, there you go. Good, good little guy, good little guy. Okay, so this part is actually pretty cool. So you just go back to the system menu, go to your uh, Wii message board, and then you gotta kinda like scroll around a little, I've noticed. Oh, yep, there it is. And then, uh, wah. And just like that, you're a hacksaw. Bam! All right, everything's fine and dandy now. We've got the homebrew channel set up. However, this is the current issue. And not all Wii's have this, but some of them do. So I'm gonna go ahead and power down here. And some of them you can install a program called BootMe that goes right to the homebrew channel, but this one doesn't support it. And it kicks us to the Wii menu. And that's not gonna be super useful on a Wii that is shoved into a GameCube shell, because <laughs> you're probably gonna be using a GameCube controller with it. So the idea is that we're gonna install something here called Preloader, um, and it's just gonna let you auto-boot the Homebrew channel, um, which does work with a GameCube controller. All right, we have the Preloader installer ready to go, and it, it looks like it wants to hurt me. All right. I don't really know what to expect from this. I think I've installed it like once. So uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, I pressed one button and now it says install done. So I guess that was pretty easy. <laughs> okay, I believe I have gone ahead and set the uh, USB loader GX to be the automatically loaded game or application, I suppose, when you boot the Wii. So let me turn it off here and then turn it back on. We should go right into USB loader. Epic, that's not what it was supposed to do. Okay, uh, so we're gonna set auto boot to uh, the file this time, like I uh, should have in the first place. And we're gonna try again. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, Bambino. 
Okay, so you may see USB loader here and be like, eh, it's just gonna be another another pirate GameCube. It's just gonna be a, a piracy. The ISO, ISO's bad. But um, the idea is to keep the DVD drive on this one. I'm going to stress that that is the idea. I don't know if that will come into fruition. <laughs> That's the downside of um, in progress content. Who knows if what I'm actually trying to do here is actually gonna make it in. So, USB loading is going to be a thing because I think it is unequivocally, is that a word? Is that, that might not be the word I wanted to use. However, USB loading is good. USB loading, good. Flash drive, good. USB hard drive, good. Disc bad. Disc get scratched and disc no work no more. Disc bad. So, anyway, I'm gonna USB load, but I'm gonna try and keep the DVD drive intact. We'll see what happens. I do actually need to make sure though that this Wii's DVD drive actually works because they're kind of known for crapping out. So, let's see. Do we have Brawl? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on, little guy. You got this. Sweet. Okay. Okay, that's a good sign. I'm gonna take it that it works. All right, well, that is pretty much gonna be it for this behind-the-scenes content. And I wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. So thanks again, and stay tuned for the next project.